Hello, everybody. Welcome to the History of New Media Art. I'm Jackie Gleisner, your instructor, and today we're going to view video works that take on a more poetic feeling. You may recall that during the last lecture, we were on the opposite end of the spectrum, analyzing works with a political agenda or inspiration. One work that exemplifies this trend is Marina Abramovich's Balkan Baroque, which was presented at the 1997 Venice Biennale. The work, which combined a three-screen video installation with cow bones and performance, was a harrowing response to the Bosnian War. Switching gears back to today's topic, we are highlighting video's possibility for lyricism and poetry. Avant-garde film from the 1950s and early 60s was most easily placed in relationship to poetry. The exploration of mood through color, lingering camera shots, fragmentation, and the replication of images all connect to the French symbolist poetry. Some of the themes we will explore in this presentation are memory, loss, mysticism, and aesthetics. Bill Viola, Gary Hill, Mary Lucier, and the artist couple Steina and Woody Vasolka are some of the artists we are going to look at. We're going to start with Steina and Woody Vasolka. The couple met during the 1960s, and together they moved to New York City in 1965. Then, in 1971, they founded Live Audience Test Laboratory, now called The Kitchen. It was a performance space devoted to electronic media in New York City. They constructed environments using multiple monitors and cameras. Before turning to video art, Woody was a poet, and there's evidence of his background in many of their artistic collaborations. Much of their work integrates the intrinsic properties of the machine as well as cultural coding by focusing on latent or overt perceptual changes that emerge. For some context on their work, please watch the short video about Steina and Woody Veselka linked on this slide. In Machine Vision from 1976, two video cameras on a motorized turntable interacted with two mirrors and two monitors, creating a camera view that was beyond the restrictions of the human eye. Reflecting on this work, Steina explained, I was horrified by the idea that if you hold the camera, you control the image the viewer sees. So I put the camera on a tripod and left the room. With the turntable, the image would move continuously without a cameraman. I wanted people to think of a point of view, that they are in a space controlled by the machine. How does this idea of being inside a space controlled by the machine connect to the topic of last week's lecture, surveillance, for example? Stein and Veselka also made work independently, and this slide shows one example. Steina's installations often involved electronically manipulated visual and acoustic landscapes. The installation Orca, <clears throat> excuse me, Okra, shown at Iceland's pavilion at the 1997 Venice, Venice Biennale, juxtaposed two transformative natural forces, water and fire, in their various manifestations volcanic eruptions, waterfalls, glaciers, um, and it revealed the workings of time in doing so. Okra featured three double-sided screens and carefully placed mirrors. The Sulka projected images of surf, burning lava, and birds with an overpowering soundtrack. Now let's take a look again at the work of Bill Viola. In a previous lecture, we analyzed how Viola's work was often an opportunity to communicate a personal narrative. Today we will be thinking about how Viola's work matches the theme of this lecture, the lyric and the poetic inside a video. This slide shows a still of Viola's work titled Playing Soul Music to My Freckles So They Won't Get Lonely from 1975. It's clear from the title of this work that here Viola is thinking about the potential feelings and inner life of something many of us do not give a second thought to, namely freckles. What could be more sensitive than affixing a speaker to one's body to serenade one's freckles. In Room for St. John the Cross from 1983, Viola made an imagined recreation of the cell in which the 16th century Carmelite mystic was imprisoned during the Inquisition. A voice is heard reciting the saint's poems in Spanish, speaking of ecstatic flights of the soul out of the dark night and over snow-capped mountains. 
The same year, Viola locked himself in a room where he attempted to stay awake for three days. He taped this attempt, called it Reasons for Knocking at an Empty House. This slide shows the four-screen installation called The Stopping Mind from 1991. Inside the space, barely audible voices murmured sentences about the body and the loss of sensation as images were frozen suddenly and then moved and then stopped again. In slow-turning narrative from 1992, Viola used a spinning, mirrored projection surface to suggest a constantly turning mind absorbed with itself. <clears throat> In yet another example by Viola, a computer-controlled five-channel video and sound installation included images that were projected onto slabs of granite. These images were then reflected on mirrored slabs placed on the floor in front of the granite pieces. Bodies appear to fall through the air and topple to the ground. The work is called Stations, and it is a meditation on the Stations of the Cross. This slide includes a link to The Messenger. One section of the three-part installation included in Viola's Fire, Water, and Breath from 1996. The work was originally installed on the ceiling of the Durham Cathedral in England. Man is in conflict with the three basic elements. A naked man in the water rises to the surface, releases a deep breath, and sinks again. In this context, beneath the church dome, viewers were engulfed in the imagery. There's also a short link to watch a video about this work on Tate Shots, included on this page. And finally, please watch an excerpt of The Crossing linked on this slide. This work was a two-channel projection of a man gradually consumed by flames and the same man drowning by water that slowly accumulated. These images may seem morbid, but as is the case with many of Viola's works, there is an underlying feeling of redemption. Many of his work employs slow motion, piercing sounds, and rich coloration, which adds beauty to the dark subject matter. Now that we've seen several examples of the poetic works by Bill Viola, let's look at the work of Gary Hill. Hill thought of his first video installation <clears throat> as a transition from sculpture to video. In Hole in the Wall from 1974, he taped himself knocking out of the wall of a gallery. He projected the tape on a monitor and placed it in the wall opening. Where the sculpture might have been placed, he added a sign that read, the video is a memory of a sculpture. Hill, who is on Vimeo, is influenced by semiotics. Ludwig Wittgenstein, the French postmodern theorist, or excuse me, French postmodern theory, as well as the history of cinema. Let's look at his work, Tall Ships, to start. <clears throat> this work was an interactive installation with multiple projection surfaces whose images of various people are triggered by the entrance of a viewer into the installation room. As the viewer walks in, figures appear as if out of nowhere. Next, please watch Bathing from 1977. A woman bathes herself in a tub, but the sequence is interrupted, spliced with still images that have been manipulated in various ways. In this work, as with others by Hill, he used the camera and image processing devices to explore the malleability of electronic colors and image density. Wild Talents by the American video artist Susan Hiller was inspired by the reputable telekinetic and telepathic abilities of the Polish psychic Stefan Osowiecki. The work of another American artist, Mary Lucier, explores the natural world through poetic videos. Lucier is also on Vimeo, which has been included on this page for your viewing pleasure. Today, we have looked at how artists have imbued their video works with a sense of poetry and lyricism. As a whole, these works are a sharp contrast from many of the videos we looked at during the previous lecture, which emphasized how video were used to comment and critique important political issues. From the technically inventive works of Steina and Woody Veselka to the slow motion footage of Bill Viola, we have immersed ourselves in a dreamy world. Often the aesthetic of the videos we saw today was crafted to depart from this world into a different one entirely. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. Thanks as always for watching, and I will see you soon.